Speedrunning is, to most of us, a sort of forbidden gaming art. The kind of thing that we watch on YouTube, enraptured, and then go back to our mortal lives afterwards. When players manage to finish games that should take tens of hours, it's undeniably fascinating to see. But this doesn't mean there aren't games that you couldn't speedrun. In fact, there are a whole lot of games that casual players could complete in under 10 minutes, without having to become some sort of godlike savant at using a controller. This might sound wild, and it very much is, it also does make a strange kind of sense. Not every game can have a complex system of skips that you need in order to make a perfect run, and it's arguably often cooler to see casual gamers be able to get almost record times while speedrunning through certain games. Some games take hours of luck, concentration and skill to get even near the quickest speedrun. Some just want you to run to the nearest town and help kill an old wizard. I am Cursor from World Culture Gaming, and these are 10 video games that anyone can speedrun in 10 minutes. Number 10, Gone Home. Gone Home, as much as it is an interesting story, got some well-deserved flack for how quickly the game can be completed. Because since the last area of the game is in part of the house that you start the game in, you can, if you find your way there quickly, finish the game in under a minute by accident, surely by picking up your sister's letter and triggering the final cutscene in the game. While it's fun that the game begins and ends within meters of another, it is understandable that it made many players feel like progression in the game was totally immaterial because indeed, it kind of was. But this does mean that you could easily brag about getting almost the best time possible on Gone Home speedrunning, because literally all it takes is sprinting to this letter as quickly as you possibly can. So long as you don't explain the exact details of it, it sounds pretty impressive, but will quickly become totally unimpressive if you do. Number 9, Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals. Look, I'm not sure how else to say this, so let's have a real talk for a moment. You can finish Lufia 2 in 52 seconds. Not minutes, seconds. This isn't a joke. You could have finished Lufia 2 at least once in the time that you've taken to watch this. Only if you're willing to use glitches, though. But you probably guessed that beforehand. Without going into a painful level of detail, you basically do this by messing with the menus in the very first room you appear in, allowing you to goof with the game to the extent that it triggers the very last piece of dialogue in the game, which then prompts the game to show you the final cutscene, ending everything within a minute. If you want to speedrun in a less broken way, you can still do so, but this will take around an hour or more if you're good. As such, it's much quicker and arguably more fun to do the slightly more cheating route to victory. Number 8, Celeste Classic. It's worth addressing right now that there is a big difference between the new Celeste and the classic version, mainly that the classic version can be finished in under two minutes if you have mad skills, whereas Celeste takes about half an hour even if you're the best player in the world. This is largely because the classic version has both less screens and smaller screens, with most levels accomplishable in about five jumps, even if they require moving through the levels in ways that maybe weren't the intended method. Said jumps will require you to almost relearn where to jump and when to, but it's well worth it for finishing a game that should take about half an hour in a ninth or tenth of that time. It's not the most simple speedrun because it does require you to hone your parkour abilities to a nuanced degree, but after a playthrough or three, most people are capable of at least giving it an honest shot. And hey, even if you mess up, it's just free practice for the next try. Number 7, Oblivion. Given Oblivion is a game that many have spent hundreds of hours in, myself included, it's straight up mind-boggling to think that you can, in fact, speedrun it in under 10 minutes. It is, however, the 10 wildest minutes of gameplay you'll ever experience in your life. Because the tutorial quest takes longer than 10 minutes to complete, instead of finishing it conventionally, you need to break out of your cell with a quick save glitch, kill all the assassins coming to kill the king, then hit him to force him and his guards to chase you, because certain doors in this area only open when they're in the proximity of them. This isn't where stuff stops being weird though. From here, you need to travel to the Imperial City Temple District, because, for simply indiscernible reasons, the developers left a secret entrance to the last area of the game behind the door of the Temple of the One. Wait for a couple of hours and Martin shows up. Because you've confused the game enough, it just presumes you've somehow done everything legitimately. Push him into the right spot and he'll trigger the final lines of dialogue in the game, which is now possible to complete in five or so minutes. Number 6, Nuclear Throne. Nuclear Throne is a game that is almost intended to be played like a speedrun. When you play the game as quickly as you can, never stop shooting and picking up power-ups and bullets as quickly as you can, the game really feels even more intense, and all the better for it. Although to some degree, this is decided by luck, because the weapons that you get and levels are largely randomly generated. 
A lot comes down to how good you are at shooting while avoiding the insane amounts of bullets sent your way. Results tend to vary massively as to what time the game is finished in as a result, but provided you're willing to get good and never stop shooting for a single moment, the game can easily be finished in 10 minutes or less. It might take a try or two, but once you get a feel for the game, playing it as quickly as you can really does feel like a fun and quick challenge. Number 5. Getting Over It if you, like many of us, have spent countless hours in quiet, painful suffering trying to complete getting over it, then you're about to hear some bad news. Namely, that you could, in theory, finish the entire thing in under 10 minutes. It seems impossible, and by all means, it really should be impossible. Even when you watch someone doing it several times, as certain unnamed writers may have done in order to do this article, it just seems surreal. But it's possible. If speedrun records are anything to stand by, a good thousand or so have finished getting over it in 10 minutes or less. Not counting everyone who has speedrun the game not for internet recognition, for simple masochistic fun. You have to master every classic getting over it move, from the windmill to the desperate flail, but if you do so, you can brag that you've managed something us mere mortals can only dream of. You truly did get over it. Number 4. Strider Strider is both a perfect game to learn speedrun mechanics from and a quick game to try and speedrun, meaning that many prospectives hoping to hone their skills have repeatedly pulled off the sweet tricks that take this game down to a roughly 6 minute experience, or even less if you care to get good at it. The crux of speedrunning through Strider revolves around strategic wall zips, which is where you launch yourself into a wall and then repeatedly pause to scroll the screen higher. Done right, this can skip you to areas that you have otherwise had to leisurely stroll and fight towards, which usually shortens the time it takes to cover ground. With records for the quickest Strider speedrun coming in at a casual 3 minutes, it's safe to say even less experienced players can finish Strider in about the time it takes for us to make a drink of coffee. Though it takes a little while to learn exactly where you need to go, Strider is almost made to be a tutorial on how to speedrun. Number 3. Entitled Goose Game Though it's not exactly a taxing game intended to last for hundreds of hours, Entitled Goose Game does, from a removed perspective, seem impossible to speedrun. But don't underestimate the power of a very mischievous goose, as when combined with equally mischievous speedrunners, those trying to figure out how to create the quickest run of Goose Havoc discovered a particular helpful secret. Holding stuff gives you magic powers. By holding whatever is near you and furiously charging at walls, you can clip through most walls and barricades, letting you cruise through the entire game on your way to its final goal. The Bell Though your journey will be perilous with the bell, as it still attracts people to come get it with a constant ringing, you can quite happily clip your way back quickly and efficiently enough that you really don't have to deal with a whole lot of people chasing you. And when you do, it's only for the seconds until you next defy physics. All in all, doing this right takes a couple of minutes, and people have argued that it may actually be the nicest way to play the game, as you don't mess around with anyone but the laws of reality. And maybe God. Number 2. Outlast now I know what you're thinking. Kirsten, there is no way that Outlast can be done in under 10 minutes, but for a good while, Outlast wasn't a game that could be run very quickly. Even when you know where you need to go, the road from the start to end is pretty convoluted and requires you to go back and forth picking things up to get to the next area. However, a sneaky little trick was picked up a few years ago, which completely streamlined your speed run, so long as you didn't mind using a cheeky glitch. At the very start of the game, in the room that you enter the first vent from, you can door hop onto the top of the door and above the map itself. From here, a series of strategic backwards crawls and hops will send you through this layer of the map at the perfect point, loading you in at the final area of the game. As such, anyone willing to hop around in areas that you were never meant to see is able to finish their speedrun of the game in roughly a couple of minutes, give or take a little bit depending on how long you faff around to find the right place. Number 1. Two Worlds Two Worlds is almost more iconic for its speedrun than the regular game, and with good reason. The main plot should require you to go through an epic quest, and at its very end take on a powerful evil for the good of justice, and being a generally nice person. However, the speedrun plays it out very, very differently. Instead of continuing the quest objectives given, you need to get outside, and then immediately run to a nearby village named Kamorin. When you get to the gate, you hit a mysterious black-robed stranger standing outside the gate, and then quickly move so that when he blasts you with a fireball, one of the villagers is also damaged. This stranger is the last boss of the game. 
Gandahar. And he is about to get his ass handed to him by the humble, hard-working people of Camorin. When a villager is hit, the entire town will flock to fight Gandahar, leaving a dozen or so NPCs beating down on the poor villain. Since there are so dang many of them, they can do this in about 30 seconds, give or take, meaning the longest and hardest part of the game is simply getting to this point. And there we go, just some of the games that you can speedrun in 10 minutes. Admit it, you're gonna go try some of these now. If you are, leave us a comment down below and let us know how you did. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. I have been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture Gaming and you can find me at Kirsten Rhea on Instagram and Twitter. But for now, I'll bid thee farewell and I will see you in the next video.